There was just something about her that I could not not call her on the phone. I couldn't not text her or FaceTime or all that kind of stuff. And then uh, the more we hung out, the more I was just like, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm a donor. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today, we are continuing our interview series. With Chris Lane and his wife, Lauren. That's right. So Chris is one of our favorite country music stars. He's written a bunch of our favorite songs, including Hold You Tonight, which he did with uh, another one of my favorite artists, Griffin. He also wrote I Don't Know About You, which is a great song. And in the interview, we talk about his song Big Big Plans, which is ultimately how he got engaged and proposed to his wife, Lauren. Lauren, you might recognize from our favorite show, The Bachelor. And we had a lot of fun talking with Chris and Lauren. Um, they had some really good words of wisdom to share, especially Chris talking about how he feels about soon becoming a father. They have a kid on the way and we couldn't be more excited for them. So if you want to find out more about Chris and Lauren, we'll link their information down below, including some of Chris's songs, our favorite songs of his at least. Uh, and before we jump into it, if you haven't subscribed or given the show a rating, please do so on whatever platform you're listening to. Let's go ahead and jump into this one with Chris and Lauren Lane. Lauren and Chris, it is a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we were just talking about, this is maybe the most amount of times we've had to reschedule. Yeah. Thanks to you and I, Sean. Yeah. But, uh, Andrew got COVID. I yeah. was sick because I was pregnant and trying to hide it. Drew, <laughs> it nannies. Was, we had a you couple guys. of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we appreciate yeah. your patience. Um, but oh, it's is that a Nashville Sounds hat, Chris? You know what? I wondered what this was because <laughs> I found it in my I was cleaned out my closet not long ago. And, uh, I found this hat and I just started wearing it, and I truly didn't even know where I'd. Is that baseball? Yeah. 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 And yeah. Now, yeah. That you, now that you say that, I did. <laughs> Big Have you fan. been to a Nashville Huge Sounds fan. game, or is, did fan. this just come from somewhere? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been to a Nashville Sounds game, but uh, I want to say maybe they sent it to me years ago. Yeah. And, uh, now that I've got my hair growing out in the back, I'm wearing a lot more hats now, and uh, <laughs> fitted hats uh, seem to fit me much better now than they did back in the day. <laughs> dude, between the mustache hair. and the mullet, bro, you freaking are rocking it. <laughs> I love it, dude. I can I can afford to do this while while we're in quarantine. <laughs> yeah. And then we were talking. It's been I, I thought it was like a few months, but it's been over a year since we've got we've seen you guys in person, which is crazy. Wild. We were trying yeah. to rack our brain about when that was, and I cannot believe it's been over a year. Yes. Well, when we both have our babies, we'll have to have a baby play date. Let's do yes. it. Hey, the right, mamas can... get together, uh, get together with the babies. The boys go play some golf. <laughs> Or wait, can Drink we some wine that? on the golf so course. So the mamas will get together for wine, and the dads will get together with the babies. <laughs> you can strap them to the front of you and go golf. Yeah. <laughs> as long as they get driving. <laughs> oh, it would be hysterical just seeing a group of dads on the golf course with babies. Okay, I actually want to start this interview. Aside from everything we just talked about. Uh, <laughs> How and when did you guys find out you're pregnant? So, was it September? I think we found out. End of September? Uh, uh, yeah. Was it? I don't know. It was I right. Remember. Yeah. So, I had taken a uh, all artist golf trip to Pinehurst, North Carolina. Uh, and w basically, you found out while I was gone, right? No, 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 no. Whoa. I think you were, you had just gotten back. Okay. I, I just gotten back and, and yeah. Lauren showed me a pregnancy test and it said positive. And, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, yeah, we, we didn't, neither one of us believed it. And we had to take like <laughs> Sean, I don't know if you experienced this, but I, we had been like trying, so it wasn't mm -hmm. like a shock or anything, but I usually would wait. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily take yeah. an early pregnancy test all the time. Uh, just because obviously I would just wait to see if I was pregnant or not. But this time I just had a weird feeling. Oh, Did you yes. like have that? Yes. And you'll know it. You'll know it every time. You'll yeah. doubt it. You'll doubt it for sure. But I believe, like I told, I told my best, best friend, even before Andrew, literally like three weeks pregnant. I was like, I think I'm pregnant. And yeah. I couldn't even get a pregnancy positive. 
test. You had that same thing, Lauren? Yes. I think I was about three and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I just had this weird feeling and it wasn't physical at all. I had no physical symptoms whatsoever. Um, Your disposition changes yes, completely. Was, everything about you. I'll take a test, you know, not again, not trusting that feeling. Um, and then obviously it came back positive. It was very faint because I was mm -hmm. so early. And then I showed Chris and we actually drove to the store to get the digital ones that like literally say pregnant or not pregnant because I was like, maybe there's something wrong with the like two line system. And then that one said, clearly pregnant. I, was like, mm -hmm. I remember with Drew, so our second pregnancy, we had the same thing with the pregnancy test. And I texted one of my friends and I was like, this is weird. I don't think it's working. I think it's broken. And she laughed and she said, any <laughs> line is a pregnant line. It's like if you see anything, it means you're pregnant. Yeah. Chris, I didn't know that. <laughs> did you cry when you found out Chris? I did not cry. No, I'm not a very emotional person. <laughs> you know what? I thought that I would, cause again, we wanted it pretty bad. And I, I thought that I would be more emotional than I was, but I think we were just both really excited, but still slightly in disbelief. Yeah. 100%. Like, I think with the first, like, I just didn't really know how everything worked and you know, you don't physically feel anything yet. You're not showing at all. You just feel like a normal person. So I don't think it hit until you know, later down the road. And then Question, goes. are you still in disbelief? Because we are. I still like, <laughs> I still will try to put jeans on. And I'm like, dang, babe, I ate too much pizza over the holidays. <laughs> and I he'll be like, no, babe, you're pregnant. <laughs> Don't you show more with, or show fast? Yes. Okay. I look, I look five months pregnant already. And I'm <laughs> 15 <laughs> weeks. It's scary. <laughs> People are like, are you having twins? I'm like, no. No, that it's just one. Sure not twins, though. For sure. Just There's only one in there. Are you having twins? I'm... No. No, we're not. <laughs> okay. No, Y'all no. know what I'm, uh, not for this to come off in a weird way, but <laughs> I thought about this a lot <laughs> through watching Lauren's process. And I feel, I feel bad for y'all that you have to put your bodies through that. But at, and at the same time, as a guy, I'm incredibly thankful that guys can't get pregnant. <laughs> Freaks, dude. It, dude. Is, it is a lot like, I mean, the first 10 weeks, I was pretty miserable. I thought oh. that I, I was like, this cannot be what it feels like. Like, I thought I had the flu or, I mean, I went and got COVID tested because I was like, there's just no way that it's <laughs> yes. supposed to feel like. Yeah, we spent like $10,000 on COVID no, tests. we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't okay, know. I don't mean to intimidate you. This is more for Chris than Lauren. Lauren, you're fine. You're going to get through this like a rock star. Chris, if you feel that way, like, thank God guys can't get pregnant already, just wait until birth. No, 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 no. I okay. actually, I actually disagree with Chris here because I've been through you it. You want to be able to get pregnant? I've been through it. One, no, no, I don't want to be able to get pregnant, <laughs> but I don't think the guys have it like super easy. Physically, sure. We don't have to like no. do the whole thing. Chris, but Chris the amount of times. a husband doesn't say. Dog, you just don't say it. The next couple months for you, bro, are going to be the most humbling. Look, you got to be there to support Lauren, right? That's our job. And that freaking gets so hard during pregnancy. It is a no, whole no, different I can't, animal. I can't. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I think it gets worse from here. <laughs> oh, I, we mean this oh, to say we're man. so excited for you yeah, and yeah. it's the hardest thing you'll ever go through but it is the greatest joy you will ever feel in your entire life yeah oh my goodness Have babies are the best and we're gonna get us we're gonna get a song out of this as well like i'm so glad <laughs> yes. to get pregnant oh, so that's <laughs> <so cool. laughs> <laughs> um yeah no we're really excited so thank you guys and we're excited for you guys yeah all right quick break here a couple things is brought to you by best fiends things have come a long way since we were kids babe but there's just something about the classics i read to drew every day and rereading these classic books that i grew up with really takes me back yes we love story time with her and you know what else is an instant classic best fiends it's the top rated mobile puzzle adventure I literally can't stop playing it. You guys know I've been playing Best Fiends for a while. We've been, we've been sharing it with you for a long time. And the feeling of reaching a new level, which they continually add, just doesn't get old. It really is so much fun. And don't worry, you're never going to get bored with this game. There are 5,000 puzzles and counting. They are always updating the app with new fun elements. 
It's got the colors, it's got the characters, and it's got the continuous updates. Don't blame us if you get addicted. Whether you want to fight boredom or stress, or you want to add a bit of friendly competition to your home, Best Fiends can help. And the best part is it's free. You can download Best Fiends for free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. I want to take it way back All real right. quick. Go for so, it. So, reality TV is where we first learned your name. How did you guys meet? So, <laughs> we actually met right after I got off of reality TV. And I, at no surprise to anyone, got engaged on a TV show. <laughs> <after>. No surprise. <laughs> and we... Um, Knowing her like I know her now, that is incredibly surprising to yeah, me. Yeah, it, <laughs> very, it was very... The decision to go on that show was very outside my comfort zone. Like, I... Okay. I still look back and I'm like, I wonder what gave me the courage to actually go for it because I'm pretty shy and I was a flight attendant, like just living my, you know, I was very happy and content. And so I'm surprised that I did go on it. But anyways, we, um, speaking of flight, not to, not to bear off the, but speaking of flight attendants, that is, that would be a, I, I know a lot of people love doing that, but for me, I'm scared of heights and flying and I would be <laughs> incredibly scared to have that job on a daily basis it it, it would be wild yeah i was actually gonna ask can you kind of give the the uh the pre-boarding spiel like you know you got access on the do can you still do that (laughs) i don't think i remember no because to be quite honest you actually read it (laughs) you never really had to memorize it and then also there are different positions like as a flight attendant so the lead or whatever, or the A flight attendant, what we called it, is the one who would do all the announcements. Okay. And I didn't personally love, again, I was kind of shy, so I didn't really love doing the A position. I was much more comfortable, like, in the back. Lauren, you're telling me you're too shy to speak to a, a plane full of people, <laughs> yeah. but not but not too shy to go on a national television show? That is wild. I yeah, mean, good for you. I have ADD and I am yeah, but anyway, so we, um, Ben, who I got engaged to on The Bachelor, we were presenting at an iHeartRadio uh, concert. Was it a concert in Austin, Texas? Yeah, it was in Austin. And one of his friends who works at iHeart just introduced him to us. And it was like, hey, meet Chris. He's like a young artist, new artist. He just put out a song, blah, 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 blah. We said, hey, Chris was actually by and himself. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't just anybody. This was Tom Pullman yes, we're talking about. Who's like, who, yeah, he basically runs iHeart. Runs iHeart. <laughs> okay. Super nice guy. I didn't know him though, and I didn't know Chris, obviously. And so we just kind of very like we yeah, said he, hi. Yeah, basically. he he wanted to walk over and say hello and Chris I just was went kind with of him. a bachelor stan. He's not gonna admit it, but he oh, so that's damn, why what? He <laughs> I see you dog. <laughs> <now. laughs> so that's why he was introduced. But I felt kind of bad for Chris because he was literally by himself. Like he was just standing like by himself so I was like you can come hang out with us like truly like just trying to be nice because I felt bad like he was just standing by himself and so anyways nothing really came of that I was engaged kind of focusing on that relationship which is really difficult after the show like it does it takes a lot of work you're kind of like getting to know each other Mm. all over in a way Mm -hmm. So I was very hyper focused on that. So obviously not even thinking about that, but that's how we actually initially met and became acquaintances. And then throughout the years kind of stayed in touch. Like, I think I ran into him in Nashville. He was like trying to pick up on one of my friends. I was kind of trying to make it happen. <laughs> I was like truly trying to play matchmaker. And then we met again at, uh, or we saw each other again at Tortuga music festival, like years later. Um, Wait, how many years have gone by by now? I mean, a lot, like, Right, five or six, yeah. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, since we first met. So it was like a long, you know, we went from like acquaintances to, I was like, oh, Chris is such a good guy. Like, meet this friend of mine. And you did kind of hang out with a couple of my friends, which is fine. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, fast forward to two and a half years ago, um, I was single. And I don't know, like our friendship just kind of, became more than that I think it was because the timing was just right like again I was not in a relationship and um you're uh 
your attempts at my friends didn't work out. So that <laughs> just kind of like naturally, you know, develop from hey, there was a all friendship. there was there was all a plan. It was, it was I was gonna say, Chris, cool. was it always there though? You fell in love? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always knew it was going to be her in the end. <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a lie. Yeah. Funny, it was. I knew such it. Such a lie. But Lord, I'm no not- lie. You, you looked at, at Chris's mullet and mustache. You said, I need that. <laughs> yeah. I need that in yeah. my life. Back yeah. in the day, you didn't really. Actually, you did kind of have a little bit of Kind of, yeah. But I had, I had a hilarious haircut. And I, and I honestly <laughs> had this haircut trying to be funny. And... <laughs> And in the beginning, when we first started dating, Lauren would never say anything to me about it. Like, she just kind of, like, let it go. And then as we started, you know, made it official, all that kind of stuff, she was like, okay, time for a new haircut. Like, no more. I didn't feel like that. I was just like, maybe maybe we should try something different. I mean, it's okay. I... I honestly had to have like a full on intervention with Andrew at one point. So. I had dreadlocks, Chris. I had dreadlocks. No, 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 no. That hey, no, I no. Rocked them, we dog. did not date when he had dreadlocks. Right. You, we were not dating. Yeah, not to say this is different. I look good. No, he didn't. It was a terrible picture. <laughs> he had longer hair too, right? That's when I had to have the intervention because it went from like cute long guy hair to like. It, w- it got like creepy long guy. Like, hair. you know, when you're walking through the airport, you see like a six year old dude with like a ponytail and he's balding. Like that. I was on the fast track yeah. to that. You know? yes. It was it wasn't like this. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Long hair. And then, like, of course, I said something to him for months and he thought I was just being like a nagging wife. And then he now looks back at pictures and he's like, why would you ever let me grow my hair out that long? I was like, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? I'm curious. Has uh, Lauren, your experience on reality tv yeah like grown or diminished the desire to share your life publicly and chris i don't know how like when sean and i met i was a college student playing football (laughs) so like the whole social media realm and like doing interviews and being on tv was not my vibe um but it kind of just came with the territory so well can i add to that too how does that work with your career chris because i feel like as a musician it you get to choose what you put out there whereas mm-hmm. reality tv is more of you share it all quote unquote so how has that balance been for you guys finding that yeah that's i mean honestly it's true i think um i guess i'll speak on my end of things i was like super uncomfortable at first especially right after the show it was it took years to adjust um from being a private person to the criticism and kind of like the bullying that can take place to going through a public breakup. I mean, it was definitely not easy throughout when it's, you know, things that are so personal to you, but I feel like now I'm more comfortable and I think I've found a balance of what works for me. And, um, when I need to stay, step back and like take time, we just went on a vacation for instance, and I was not really on social media at all, especially for the first couple of days, like didn't even have my phone. Love so I think that. it's just like finding that balance. Um, and I do, there are things that I like want to share and I get excited to share, obviously, you know, one being our recent pregnancy and stuff like that. But um, I think it's just about finding that balance and then just kind of creating like that new normal. And it was not normal mm-hmm. for me at first, but now it kind of just feels normal ish. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, too, you know, from my perspective, um, I mean, I, I'm sort of private person, but yeah, I get to choose what I put out there. And and for me, um, when I when I first met Lauren and, you know, now that we're married, all that kind of stuff, I've shared a lot of our relationship just through social mm-hmm. media. But a lot of it is because I want people people don't get to see the side of Lauren that I get to see on a daily basis and how goofy and, and crazy and funny she is and and. So I have all I, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh, of videos that she would probably never let me share that <laughs> yeah. I will find a way to share at some point. But <laughs> um, uh, that are so funny, and I, I feel like uh, I want people to uh, see that side of her that I get to see every single day. So I find bits and pieces that uh, I know she won't absolutely murder me if I do share. But you know, <laughs> you experienced kind of what is the bachelor world when we first started dating and like the criticism that comes with it and the, you know, it is like a really big circle and it's like a big thing. And I feel like I remember you telling me, I can't even remember what exactly it was, but you were like, 
kind of upset because an article was written that wasn't really completely accurate or what I don't know anyways but yeah you just yeah. kind of like now well, I was have a thick skin I was curious Chris I feel like the bachelor world is kind of a lot of the people kind of stick to dating other people from that have been on the show Lauren like you kind of know how that whole thing works if not getting engaged to, to whoever they uh, got engaged to on the show how how was it for you to step into that world like have has there been some interesting like effects of of that chris yeah did it ever i actually don't know if i've ever asked you this did it ever bother you to know that a certain chapter of my life was very public i mean honestly no i, I don't think i truly cared um yeah once i fell in love with her i, I think in the love. beginning with Lauren, i first started dating uh, I think we were both trying to run from each other because I'll be quite honest with you. I've told her this a million times, but I did not want to, uh, I did not want to settle down. I wanted to just mm. live my life and I was completely content and happy with, uh, with the way things were going. But there was just something about her that I could not, mm. not call her on the phone. I couldn't not text her or FaceTime or all that kind mm. of stuff. And then, uh, the more we hung out, the more I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is it. I'm a dunner. Oh, God. I'm a dunner. I'm a dunner. <laughs> Dang, that sounds like true love. That's, that is, I got the that's chills sweet. listening to that. That is really sweet because I think that's really cool. I think a lot of people try to run from the life that they don't feel like they need or want and keep like will fall into it, which I think is really, really a sweet story. I think uh, I truly actually used to pray, too. Wow. I used to ask the Lord, you know, I want it for me if you want that for me. But at this point in my life, please don't send that to me because I'm not ready for it and I don't want it. And then he said, ha ha, here you go. Can <laughs> Chris, the mic's yours, bro. You just freaking yeah. spill that wisdom the rest of the, the rest of the time we have together. I man. am you curious just, though. That was amazing. Going down that a little bit further, because we've, we've heard this story before um, with like other people and Chris, did it scare you or at the time, did you, were you just mm. so happy where you were that you just didn't want it to end? Does that make sense? Did the commitment uh -huh. scare you? Yeah. Why were you? So oh, did commitment scare me? 100% mm -hmm. because I knew that I would find a way to ruin it at some point. And mm. I, I think I thought so much of Lauren and liked her so much as a friend that I thought to myself, don't get involved. Like, don't do that to her because I will eventually find a time to run the opposite direction. And I didn't, I never did. I never wanted to, uh, it honestly was the easiest thing in the entire world. And, uh, you know, a lot of that is she's beautiful inside and out. And I needed someone with a, uh, funny and vibrant personality and she is that mm. and I'll, i also I'm a, I'm a homebody and she's also a homebody so we yeah, so we can enjoy time. our yeah i enjoyed a long time before now uh i don't feel like i need that i feel like my alone time is with her and and hanging out on the couch watching the show also this guy's a beast dude i freaking love this guy <laughs> your brother went through like a hard situation which i feel like you told me kind of made you yeah scared also because he didn't have such a great experience with a relationship and marriage and it was really difficult on him so i feel like you also that kind of came into yeah my, my identical twin brother went through a, a very hard uh divorce and i won't mm. go into the story but i also looked at that and i was like good lord i would never want to put mm. myself through that mm -hmm. and i just assumed that that would probably uh end up happening i mean mm. i didn't want to be quite honest with you my entire life, I've always said, I don't want kids. I don't want none of that kind of stuff. I, I just, it wasn't in me. I didn't want it. And here we are. When, yeah. When you, when you meet the right, <laughs> I've learned that when you meet the right person, it changes everything and will make you uh, want things that you never wanted before. A couple things is brought to you by Beekeepers Naturals. You guys know that we care about our health and are always trying out new wellness products. Yep, and I wanna tell you something that's been a part of my daily routine for a while, and I think you'll love it too. It's Beekeepers Naturals Propolis Throat Spray. Tell them about the bees, babe. <laughs> So this throat spray is full of natural ingredients that boost your immune system and soothes a scratchy throat. I need that right now. 
The main ingredient is B propolis, which delivers natural germ-fighting properties and antioxidants to defend and protect our bodies. It's sustainably sourced and this spray is made with just three simple ingredients. You'll never find refined sugars, dyes, or dirty chemicals in these products, ever. Beekeepers Naturals is reinventing the medicine cabinet with clean remedies that actually work. Everyone is sick of seeing unhealthy ingredients hidden inside the -the over-the-counter remedies that are designed to make people healthier. Things like refined sugars, pesticide residue, dyes, and dirty chemicals. These products only mask symptoms. And Beekeepers Naturals is creating everyday solutions to modern health issues. They are so confident that you'll love their products like I do, that they offer a 100% money back guarantee. If for any reason you're unhappy with their products, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. And we've worked out an exclusive deal for Couple Things listeners. Receive 15% off your first order. Go to beekeepersnaturals.com forward slash eastfam or use code eastfam at checkout to claim this deal. That's B-E-E-K-E-E-P-E-R-S N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S dot com slash East fam. We will also include a link in the description below. One of my favorite books is called The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. We'll have to get you guys a copy because oh, it's yeah. the, but the way he breaks down. He made me read this while we were dating. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't playing oh, around. <laughs> he kind of he kind of just walks through like the full implications of marriage, like from a con- contractual side, from a spiritual side, from like a personal side. And he talks like to your point, Chris, of being scared to mess it up. I think yeah. that's the coolest part of marriage is that pretty much every day, like, like I already, we were in a big argument before this yeah. and I like every day you kind of find a way to mess it up. But the cool yeah. thing is that mar- like marriage is really the most powerful, uh, I think, illustration of true love because all right the other person has to be like yeah you messed up and now we're gonna just work through it and we're gonna be married at the end of this you know so yeah. anyway it gets me pumped up uh on a lighter topic that was that was really good stuff but i'm curious so we have chris the musician and when you guys met sounded like he was pretty early on in his career lauren you know the the tv star i feel oh like lauren could be a singer potentially <laughs> Lives. Hey, can we hear a duet sometime? Let's Come go. On. Absolutely. I <laughs> gotta warm up first. Yeah. Who was a bigger fan boy or girl of the other? Like in our in our situation, it's obvious Sean was a massive fan of mine. She's like, oh my gosh, college football player. I need to date this guy. But what about in your situation? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I can't speak for Lauren, but um I don't know if I even thought of it in that way, you know, uh, looking at her. Like, yeah, I was a Bachelor fan, and I, I honestly, I can't even remember w- watching the season, what, what even happened, none of that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, a, a fan of the show, I, I guess maybe I was a fan of Lauren, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I was more of a fan of her beauty. Okay, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I was a fan. I liked Chris's music, and... But yeah, honestly, like I never, I think because I met Chris early on and we had developed this friendship, I never like saw him Mm. as this, like, as what he is, which is like a super talented musician. I just saw him as like a super sweet guy and like someone that I was like, oh, he'd make such a good, you know, boyfriend, husband for someone else. I never thought it would be for me, but I was a fan of his music. I would, Mm. I would turn up your music. I will, I will, I will say there was one song that, uh, when I put it out, Lauren, oh, yeah, did, yeah. Lauren did call it like I had no idea that it was going to be the biggest song of my career. But uh, I remember talking to her about it and she was like, I really like this song. And it was a song called I Don't Know About You. And it ended up I had zero thought of it was going to be a single. And she kind of called that song. It ended up being the biggest song of my career. So wow. far. That's cool. It would be hysterical if Lauren was like, yeah, I just don't like his music. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not really a fan. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah. Chris, so we'll, we'll link that song down below, but also this. So I'm a low key huge Griffin fan, and the collab you oh. did with him, dog, you freaking crushed it, bro. I Appreciate love that song. It. Wait, that's amazing you. that you're a Griffin fan because I Lauren was as well before the collaboration even came about. I was like, wait, Griffin? Like, I'm a big fan of him. Huge like, fan. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, that was uh, that was a little collaboration. Uh, 
I'm super thankful for it. I, can't, I haven't even played that song live. It, I put it out during the quarantine, and we haven't been able to play a show since. So uh, that's a shame. I yeah, I can't wait to get out there and and, uh, and play it. Andrew goes through these phases whenever he finds a new song that he likes. I don't know if you're like this. Probably not. Um, but he will listen to it on repeat for a solid like six weeks. That's so awesome. that is the only song that played in our house on repeat it's for true. over a month easily. Wait, and then at, by the time that you do after that's finished, that cycle, yeah. you like so over it though. No, he's not. No, shut no offense. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we need, we need a new one, but hey, I'm, I'm the same. And it's funny that you're saying that because I have this record that I always listen to. It's this <laughs> old Kenny Chesney record that never even had a single off of it. It was, it was this record called be as you are that I listened to all the time. And Lauren's like, okay, we, we got to listen to something different. <laughs> <Yeah. Come> on, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. What's no. the one you were, you were on this kick for the Eagles? No, Bo- Bohemian. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, who's the who's Bo- Bohemian? Freddie Rhapsody. Mercury, Queen. I was on Queen. Queen for, yeah, 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 he was on Queen for a solid like eight months. Is that because I, of the movie? Yes. Yes. I thought I was going to lose my mind. But Chris, it's also because I could do a really good Freddie no, Mercury can't. impression. Shh, don't do it. I there pretty much sound. Do don't do it. Can we hear no, it? No. no. I want As to a... ride my bicycle. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I would love to know. So we got to interview Aloe Black and his wife. And oh, my gosh. Just punch myself in the <laughs> face. Take it with easy, my mic. Um, Chill out. And I've always been curious with songwriting and with musicians. So he had this interesting takeaway with his songs that every once in a while he'll sing a song, write a song that pertains to his life and his wife and his kids. But other than that, he can talk, he can sing about anything and kind of like act his way through it. I'm curious with your music, do you tend to keep it personal are you not allowed to keep it personal? Like, what are your guys' boundaries within the creative realm of what it is you you sing about? Yeah, I mean, personally, I don't feel like I have any boundaries. Um, I mean, if Lauren heard a song that I wrote and she was like, no, you're not sharing that, I would say, <laughs> okay, I'm still sharing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't feel like there's boundaries with it. Um, I feel like I know what I'm allowed to, to talk about or sing about. But uh, yeah, not not every song that I put out is going to be personal. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like people react. I, I've learned through Big Big Plans that uh, a song really that I had just wrote her for, for that specific moment um, and had no you know, plans to kind of put it out into the world other than just making a little video for it. And I put it on YouTube and it kind of did its, you know, took on its own. Uh, mm. Yeah, it, it did. Little thing. Yeah, it, so, it exploded. Uh, I, I learned I learned that uh, people definitely like songs that are personal to your story. And the best thing that can happen is what kind of happened with that song. Uh, something that was very personal to me and our story people took and turned into their own story. Mm. Uh which is what you can only hope to do in the writing room every day. It usually doesn't happen, but um, we connected on one that day and I'm, I'm super thankful for that. So yeah, a lot of songs will 100% uh, be that way, but not every, not every one of them. I mean, you know, at some point in your life, you're going through heartbreak at some point, you know, you can, I can still sing about all that kind of stuff, even yeah. though I'm not at that season in my life. Well, you have to expand for those that might not know about big, big plans. Tell yeah. us exactly what you're talking about. Oh yeah, so uh, Big Big Plans was a song that uh, I wrote for Lauren and our engagement. Uh, the way I planned this thing out was she had given me uh, strict, <laughs> guidelines, strict guidelines on if I were to ever propose at any point in our life, I was never allowed to do it on stage, I was never allowed to do it in a stadium or wh- whatever. I didn't say allowed, I was just like, Maybe you, I would just prefer something yeah. a little more. Yeah. 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 Wow. Just so um, I thought to myself, what can I do to be creative for an engagement? Because I'd already bought the ring. Um, and just like I wrote it in the song, I, I kept it hid in the in the 
bottom left side of my uh, sink drawer <laughs> because I knew she would not go on my side and ever be able to find it. Um, <laughs> And a lot of people have asked, like, well, how did how did she not know what was going on? Because you had a video camera there to, to film it and all that kind of stuff. And what I did to disguise it is at the time we were talking about doing this uh, YouTube show in a way. And so we were just I had my videographer out on the road with me and we were playing up near Portland, Oregon. I was on tour with Brad Paisley at the time. Mm. And uh, basically what happened was I said, baby. So we don't have to uh, spend a whole extra day traveling up to Portland, Oregon. We, we're, we had already planned on staying at her parents' house for Father's Day, which was the next day, which was the day that I proposed on. Um, why don't we go ahead and get some shots with your family so I don't have to fly somebody back out there and, and we can kind of kill two birds with one stone while we're out here. And she was like, oh, great idea. So <laughs> I disguised it as if we were shooting stuff for YouTube all day long. Uh, and she had no idea what the real plan was. Um, and uh, just like any song that I bring home after writing, I always say, hey, I wrote this song today. You know, give me your opinion. And that's kind of how I played this out was, oh, babe, I just got a, a, a new song back that I just wrote. But I wrote this one specifically for you. Uh, and I want to play it for you. And we were there in her parents' backyard. Um, and to be quite honest with you, when that song started playing, I blacked out. Like I was about as nervous <laughs> as I could be. A because I didn't. A because I needed her to actually listen to the song yeah. the lyrics, yeah. because it was going to be a proposal in there. Uh, so when we got through the the second verse and into the chorus, I mean, I was trembling. Like oh. I, I, I I couldn't think about what I was going to say when I got down there. I had already before I played the song, I ran inside asked Lauren's mom for a pen and I wrote down one word on my hand just in case I were to lock up and not realize how I wanted to start. So yeah, as it was getting close to that third verse, I, I whispered in her ear and I said, babe, this part's my favorite part. Make sure you're listening. And Aww. the word for right now we're back in her hometown and I'm down on one knee. I guess she finally figured out I'm going to ask her to marry me. And Jeez. she starts. Yeah. Yeah. She started, she started crying and, I walked her out to the yard, uh, and thankfully she said yes. Hon honestly, I <laughs> yeah. what I said in that moment because I, I, again, I was blacked out. And the best part about this is, is I was able to have uh, literally a proposal every night on stage after I released this song. Like someone proposed on stage every night, wow. and I watched mm. guys go through what I went through. Like, <laughs> as soon as I had a mic on stage, they forget everything. That <laughs> And it's, it's, that's my, it's a hilarious moment, but it's, it's the best moment. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the Dang. backstory uh, behind that song. And a lot of people don't know this <laughs> leading up to that. Uh, in her parents' backyard, they have these two little corgis uh, that run around. <laughs> and uh, her dad's got a super nice backyard. So we had her, it was a gorgeous day in, in Portland. And I had my shoes off all day. I was barefoot. Oh, no. And right before the proposal, I stepped in a huge dog turd no. barefoot. No. Someone told us about good luck. I, mean, and I don't know if they were just trying to make us feel better about 100 it. 100% but... trying to make us feel better. There's no way. That... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to explain to the fact that it's good luck. Yeah, for sure. Wait, Lauren, did you, did you, did it take you until the third, like, is it chorus verse? I don't know the lingo, guys. Yeah. Did it take you that long to figure it out? Or did you figure it out? I, so... I would say that day I was already like a little suspicious, if you will. But at the same time, it was also Father's Day. So I was like, he's not going to propose on Father's Day. <laughs> and then he had kind of thrown me off because he had said, you know, make sure you have a cute outfit. We're going out to dinner the following night. So I thought maybe I knew he was proposing soon, though. I like, tried everything I could to throw off. <laughs> yeah we i mean we had talked about it we picked out the ring together i mean months and months back but if there's any advice that i can give guys listening right now or or girls whatever um it is let your wife pick out her <laughs> own ring and you can't mess it up <laughs> dude that's a but, good call honestly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, but yes i the song started playing i think i just i don't really know if i thought about what is happening right now i think i just 
was so in the moment. Like that might be the one time in my life where I've never, or where I've been the most just like in the moment, truly like not Mm. thinking about anything else. Like, I think I kind of forgot that my family was there. I forgot that there were, you know, these two guys with their little cameras there, like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he just came in. Nash joined us. No. <laughs> but yeah, I was Cooper. just so present that I don't even think I really was thinking about what was happening, if that makes sense. Do you... Uh, Hi, baby. <laughs> Nash, say hello. Oh, we have yes. we have some dog cameos going on. Um, hello, Nash. <laughs> Lauren, do you remember what Chris said oh, when he got down on a knee? Um, Actually, no. And I, I don't remember be- what he said. Yeah, no, and it's in video. Like I can go look it up. I should know. Yeah, I, I said something about. I, I know I said something about I have I like, to spend the rest of my life with you. Yeah, I think mm. that. Yes, I do remember that. And then yes, I and I'm not. A then very, I stepped in the dog turd, and I feel like that was. <laughs> no, you don't. That's helpful, you know? I remember Andrew telling me all he could think about was. He got. He got like. He wigged himself out. He's like. Wait, which hand is the left if I'm facing her in the the? <laughs> no. no, dude, why? You buy the ring and it comes in a big old fat box, but like you can't put that in your pocket without it being absolutely yeah. obvious. So yeah. I had the I had the loose ring in my pocket like the whole day, and I was so I nice. was so nervous. Anyway, a couple things is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I know you've heard me talk about these before. It is by far my favorite greens drink athletic greens it's my favorite too we have tried so many greens powders before we finally found athletic greens it tastes the best and has amazing ingredients in it it's so good and one tasty scoop of athletic greens contains 75 vitamins minerals and whole food sourced ingredients including a multivitamin multi-mineral probiotic greens superfood blend and more that all work together to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet increase energy and focus aid with digestion and supports a healthy immune system all without the need to take multiple products i felt so much better since i've been drinking these greens consistently i've gotten better sleep and have definitely had more energy and right now athletic greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system during the winter months they're offering couple things listeners a free one-year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs of greens with your first purchase if you visit our link today you'll basically never have to buy a vitamin d again so whether you're looking for a peak performance or better health covering your bases with athletic greens makes investing in your energy immunity and gut health each day simple tasty and efficient simply visit athleticgreens.com forward slash east fam and join health experts athletes and health conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every single day again simply visit athleticgreens.com forward slash east fam and get your free year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs today we'll also link it down below let's get back to it Wait, okay, so Sean, did you know? Did you guys, had you guys talked about marriage and like... Lauren, I didn't even know I was going to propose. He decided to propose the night before. <laughs> like, he planned it the night before. Um, I had no idea. I figure out all surprises. Yeah. And I, knowing him, he would never do something on a public stage. Especially yeah. back then when we were dating. Never. Like, that was the last thing I could ever... And I, that's not what we had talked about. We wanted something more intimate. And he proposed in the middle of Wrigley Field, in the middle of a oh game. Oh, my God. So, that's, that's a big move right there. Yeah, but oh we were in an argument that day. I was supposed to be working. Yeah. It was just, it was a mess. And then all of a sudden he came out and proposed. You had that ring in your pocket, like, in such a crowded, like, yes. that would, I know. That would it was, me out. It was yeah. a bad idea from top to bottom, except for, <laughs> except for the idea it of me sweet. wanting to marry her. He somehow managed to have like a custom jersey made in time with like the new last name, and it was oh, really cute. Wow. You executed it really well, but and you did so in a very short amount of time, which is very impressive. Yeah, yeah. he's such uh, a romantic. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing like a yeah. white like V neck t. It was like an undershirt. Anyway, it was a not not my finest Wait, moment. Wait, I have a question. What? Okay, so <laughs> I want to switch back to babe. Oh, well, oh, oh, you're changing topics. Yeah, is that okay? okay. No, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please, you don't want to talk about this. Um, first, you guys got a second dog. Yes. In fact, Congratulations. Yeah, yes. That's amazing. Dog We're dog huge dog people. Um, yeah. But going back from like fur babies to babies, what are you guys most excited about and what are you most nervous about with your baby? 
your baby boy. Ooh. Um, oh my gosh. So many things I'm nervous about. Like, I think it's just, I'm hoping that, you know, our, our intuition and just like nature kicks in and I just know what to do. But right now thinking about it, I'm like, I mean, I grew up babysitting and I have three younger siblings and stuff like that, but obviously never had my own baby before. So I don't really know what to do. So very nervous about many, many, many things, but obviously just very excited. I'm excited to see like what he looks like and like what his personality is and just like, just wild to think that there's this human growing inside my belly and he's going to be his own little person and, you know, have his own personality. So excited to just meet him at this point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I can help my anxiety because you already have one and another on the way. But um, so one of the reasons I, I'm just keeping it real right now. A lot of people would never even know this, but uh, one of the reasons that I was always thinking that I never wanted to have kids is because I'm a hypochondriac over sickness. <laughs> oh, and oh. I feel kids get sick all the time. And now, now I don't care about, like, I don't care about like, like colds and all that kind of stuff. But what I am definitely, one of my worst fears in life is throwing up. And I feel like mm. maybe this is just in my head, but I feel like, kids always pass along some type of stomach virus that makes you throw up. And I've, I've like worked this out in my mind and I'm definitely afraid of throwing up. So one of my worst fears. So uh, all these are nerves. I like we've Drew's actually never thrown up. Like in that sense, you'll in the infant stage stage, there'll be a lot of like spit up, but it's, it's totally manageable. I think and it, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. d- to get into the details for you, it doesn't smell like throw up. It yeah. doesn't look like throw up. It's it looks chill. like you. She basically took a drink, or he take, took a drink of milk, and just decided I. Bleh. But Chris, it's like that's it. Let me paint a picture <laughs> for you. What I've been doing the past two weeks, and see if you would be into this or not. Oh gosh. There's a there's a tool they oh call the nose Frida. All right, and so when when the when a baby has a, like you've seen this, yeah, has yeah. Lauren or has Chris? Do you know? Oh Probably no. Not. So when a baby has a runny nose, they don't really know how to like blow their nose. So you have to use this tool and you stick a little you stick a tube in their nose and you have to like suck it out with your mouth that (laughs) (laughs) i mean i'm not i'm not an idiot but i'm just there's a filter however like i can deal i can deal with like the other bodily fluids of the baby i cannot Dude, I can't, I can't even look. I'm like plugging my ears and closing my eyes. I can't do that one. Does it make like a weird noise? Just like snot gurgling. Anyway, that oh. was, that was too vivid. By <laughs> it, 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 it makes me feel queasy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, and then they have another one for the, for the opposite end of the baby too. So. You, you don't, I'm not. No, no it doesn't don't. work the same way. <laughs> but it's a it similar. It doesn't kind. work the same way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't no i did roll it back yeah i i didn't i didn't pitch that well but no anyway. uh, lauren i'll explain all this to you yes. later we'll but next yeah as far as like sickness goes and everything babies are miraculous and drew has had colds but we've been like you'll be fine Mm-hmm. it'll I be like great all right good with dogs i mean we've had two puppies mm-hmm. now yeah have accidents that are not pleasant at all yeah, yeah. So like, like if you can do that and i think that's a good that, that's that's a good reference point yeah i think dogs are way nastier in that sense i also feel like not to get like too graphic but everything just you get eased into everything mm-hmm. like it's just a very slow rollout. And like, once you get used to something, it will get a little crazier and then yeah. a little crazier, but it's not like you burr the baby and they're puking and yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, doing all like even changing stuff. the diaper, <laughs> even the diaper at the start is like pretty mellow. Like I, I thought that was going to be nasty, but then it actually Have doesn't get nasty. A diaper before ever? A what? Before Drew, had you changed a diaper? Never. Neither of us. Never. Yeah. Me yeah. Dude, you're going to crush as a dad. You're going to be a great dad. It's awesome. And, Lauren, and you got it. 
<laughs> Lauren, you're going to be an amazing mother. <laughs> but you were talking about intuition. Yeah. If you love your baby, everything works out. Like, yeah. it works. Mm -hmm. You don't, like, I tell all my friends who are getting ready to have babies and stuff the same thing. You don't have to obsess over the products. You don't have to obsess over the nursery or anything. You're going to have your baby. You're going to be holding him. Something's going to happen. You're going to be like, I need a burp cloth. And it's like, oh, let's go buy some burp cloths. Yeah. Or they're, they have an upset belly. What can I give them? I mean, it just, it happens so naturally mm -hmm. that it's all fine. Chris, have what? you thought about, have you thought about a push present for Lauren though? Yeah. What? A <laughs> <laughs> A push yeah. present. <laughs> a push present? Yeah, this is a thing. Is that a real uh, thing? Uh, Thank no, you I guess it's a thing. Yeah. yeah, dude. So there's a new tradition. We didn't, I didn't actually, I had heard of it. He hadn't. You need to have a gift ready. It's usually in the form of a ring. What? Yeah, it's usually a band. No, dude, no. So it's Ooh. usually, I'll tell you why. So, I just they, bought a ring. <laughs> <laughs> How many we got to buy? Well, yeah. okay. So what they what they would say, <laughs> like if you Google it, is the wedding ring is supposed to represent you. And then you like the new tradition. It's like more of a millennial thing. Is like mm. you get her another band to represent the baby. Mm. But it's to it's because she pushes the baby out. It's a push present. Yeah. Well, this get is on that. all brand new news to me. And uh, yeah, I... I I guess I better start thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Do you consider the vacation you just went on the baby moon? <laughs> yes. That's a yeah. baby moon. Nice, nice. Well, Great. actually, so we never got to go on our honeymoon. Yeah. We had it planned for last April, and then oh. obviously everything shut down. So Dang. it was kind of both. It was like honeymoon, slash baby moon. That's slash, awesome. Um, a couple of friends of ours have a house there, so we saw them. So it was kind of like just a lot of things wrapped into one. Um, so we got that out of the way. The push present. Yeah. A push present. A what? <laughs> a what? Hey, <laughs> okay, we are the same way. Okay. Hard hitting question. This is the last one. Okay. This is what we end every podcast with. Both of you individually, what is the best piece of advice you have been given or would give to anybody out there about relationships or being a couple? I would say best piece of advice that I could give would be marriage is incredibly hard. Marriage is incredibly rewarding mm. and totally worth it. If you find the right person. Wow. <laughs> From the man well said. Not a believer, I just kind of thought of that. Yeah. Off, so love it. I love that. <laughs> um, oh Lord. I think, okay. So I have two. One applies to like married couples or in a relationship. One applies to maybe single people. Mm -hmm. So when I was, I've been in a few relationships and I always like forced it and it was always really hard. And like, I just thought that that's how relationships were, which they do have their ups and downs. But I think the minute I met Chris, I'm not going to say when you know, you know, because I didn't really have that realization moment, but I think deep down it happened so naturally and so easy compared to the other ones that I had been in that I just, I wouldn't have known the difference until I met Chris, but I mean, night and day difference in terms of just quite, you know, questioning yourself, like, do they like me? Are they into me? You know, whatever. I just knew because he was putting in an effort. It was mutual. The timing was right. Like so many things just worked out. So it was just easy. So you'll, I feel like you'll know when it's just easy and natural. And then second would be, don't go to, I feel like a lot of people say this, but don't go to bed, like mad at each other or angry. Mm -hmm. You're going to have, mo we've had moments for sure. Especially when I'm tired, that's when I feel like I'm not my best. Like if I'm tired. So at the end of the day, all I can say is the good Lord put me in Lauren's <laughs> life with the correct personality <laughs> and temperament. To, uh, what? You know what to do. <laughs> uh, don't get mad at each other. And Chris is really good at it. Squat. Oh my gosh, our dogs are fighting. <laughs> well, Chris is really good about squashing it and like talking about it. And I've gotten better about that too because I used to yeah. kind of like bottle it up and I mm -hmm. just be like, let's just talk about it tomorrow. But I've realized that that's not necessarily mm -hmm. the best way to do it. I'll tend to laugh. Like if we get mad at each other, 
like once once we get over it, like I tend to laugh a lot about it. Which it's sometimes like, like, think angers about, me more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> think about what we're literally arguing over right now. This is the dumbest thing in the world. And it's funny that we would even get mad at each other over something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy sometimes. Hey, well, Lauren, Chris, uh, so thankful you took the time to join us. Thankful for your wisdom, uh, your stories, and hope to talk again soon. Uh, for those listening that want to find out more about Lauren and Chris, we will link all their information, including some of our favorite songs down below. But uh, thanks a ton, guys. You guys yeah, thank are the best. I'm so happy for both of you, too. Yeah, yeah we'll we're excited to. for you. Yes. Baby, play. Yes, yeah. please. Baby, play it to the best.